So this presentation is called Five Keys to Radical Human Transformation. And variable is an advanced area of the human design system, which offers you an in-depth look at your cognitive design and your uniqueness. This is going to show you a clear, precise, and practical map for the transformation of your awareness and how you experience your life as well. So some people might call this not just awareness, but actually enlightenment. What Ra called the nine-centered, which is what we are, nine-centered human enlightenment is clear outer authority. So having your unique differentiated perspective given to another without an agenda, without any lies, without any distortions or manipulations, that's what we're aiming for. So if you're tired of the lies, if you're tired of the homogenization, you're right at home. Please have your My Body Graph chart or at least your variable. You can see there on, on jovianarchive.com forward slash get your variable with the underscores between get and your and variable. It's really important to have. You can uh, find that really helpful for today's session. So what Ross says about this is that there's no greater revolution in this knowledge than the understanding beyond our inner th authority that there is such a thing as leftness and rightness. So what you're looking at right now is the variable map or grid, kind of like a magic square. And when it comes to leftness and rightness, how this brain and mind system operates the top two arrows in each of those little squares, that's really important. It's the most important knowledge you can have for transforming your awareness, your state of consciousness, and your ability to be yourself. So this is where we're going to uh, end today on this map, and I'll take any questions as long as you are currently my student. Now we have two students who are signed up to continue on with us, so those two take priority in today's group. If there is time and energy, I'm happy to look at your charts if you want to give me your chart to be able to uh, field some questions. So this variable is found at a really, really deep level of your genetic makeup. Again, the time must be precise. If you operate correctly, then there's this potential of living out a possibility of your full uniqueness. And what you'll find is it's much easier to experience the spirit of your type, the type signature. We call that peace satisfaction, success, surprise, when you're accurately aligned to what is correct for you. So if you're in the human design experiment, let's say six months at least, a year, two years, three years, and you're feeling kind of stuck, like you've plateaued, you're not sure what's going on, you're not sure why you can't get to the next level, this is a good place to be. Because once you've had enough time in the experiment, experimenting with making decisions that are correct for you according to your unique genetic potential. Now it's time to move deeper. And that's the beginning of what we're going to be doing today as we move deeper into comprehending in this presentation. I'm going to explain what the variables are, why you want to learn this, going over each of the five keys to awareness, a little bit about the resources from the founder of this system, and invite you on the next step of the journey if you are ready. So I'm honored to introduce you to this, it's really the most fascinating place in human design, one of the most practical keys to uh, working with the knowledge at a deeper level, and very exciting. We're really on the cutting edge of this. There are not very many people really using this information at a um, very deep level. So. If it is correct for you to move forward, please again remember, don't do it just because I say it's awesome. Do it because your decision-making strategy says it's time for you to move forward. Now, what is variable? My variable is PLLDRL. If you know your variable, please go ahead and type it into the chat. That would be lovely to see. And when you type into the chat, mine again, PLLDRL, if you notice anybody else who has the exact same combination of letters, that's a person that is on your exact same variable family.
family. So it's kind of like, you know how I'm a projector, I'm an emotional projector, I'm a split definition emotional projector. Okay, so these letters are going to show you which of the kind of, of 16 kinds of human beings you are. Yay, look at everybody. You've got your, your letters. That's awesome. So there's, this is the four different binaries. There's combinations. It's either left or right. So we see the conscious personality side. If you're trying to read it from the grid, from the map, we have personality on the right. So I'm L, L, the arrows are pointing left, and then D, R, L. So one pointing right and the other pointing left. Now what you're going to notice as you look at everybody's combinations is that there's 60 different, 16 different types and see if you can find your buddy. Oh, look at that right there, Sarah and Rebecca. The same, P-R-R-D-R-R. -R -R. For the R-Rs and for Anne, the LLs, everybody who's got R-R -R on both sides and LLs on both sides, this stuff is really, really important to you. And do make sure that you enter into this correctly for you. It's really helpful. So it's coming from where your sun and earth are on the conscious and unconscious side. And also where the nodes are, the nodes of the moon, Rahu and Ketu, on the conscious and unconscious side. So it's pointing to something that's tying us together as far as our uniqueness and similarities. Just like, you know, projector and other projectors, there's a similarity there. Now you're looking at a similarity of cognitive potential. So those four def different positions turning into 16 different kinds of human. 16 orientations of awareness. Ra would call it orientations of awakening. And it is about our cognitive potential, our cognitive family. So now that you know what your arrow is, I want you to look on this map and find where are you. So the easiest way is to look at the top and say, okay, what's my P, P letters? Am I RR, RL, LR, or LL? Find your column and then look over to the left for the design. It's in red, easy to see. And find out which one of these are you on the design side. So since I'm P, L, L, and D, R, L, I'm right here. Okay, that's my variable family. So now I'm going to let you have a little bit of space here to look there and make sure you find out where you are on this grid, on this mapping, okay? So that you can see where your cognitive family grouping is. Meaning this is a place where you have something deeply in common with people who also have the exact same variable. Now I'm going to teach you another little trick. Okay, so you see how there's four different colors on the screen, wherever you are in that mapping. The thing that's tying all of us oranges together, where I'm at, you see this right here, the orange are all, uh, they're all evenly spaced. They're all pointed left on the bottom arrows. So those bottom arrows are showing this path that you're walking and how you're designed to see on that path. So not only do we have a variable family that we are a part of, we have something in common with the people who also share the same color, the background of that variable um, imprinting, you could say. Okay, so you could be part of the orange group. Go ahead and type that in. I'm part of the orange group, that's me, or the green group, or the blue group, or the yellow group. That would be so much fun if you feel like playing with me later. We could break into um, groups if you want to. We have, uh, I don't know if you've ever used it before, but I love Zoom breakout rooms. We could break into breakout rooms and just, yeah, talk story if you want to. Maybe we do that sometime um, down the road. I don't know if it, today is a good day. Okay, so we see we have yellows and greens and orange. Yay, Anne, I'm with you. Hey, Jimmy, I'm with you. And Sarah, you're green. Excellent. Ashrit's yellow. I'm really glad you guys are getting the hang of this. See, you're, you're already starting to orient yourself. Now, for those of you who are, we, we call them the quads. Quad left, top uh, segment up here. You see that top area, orange, at the very top. 
and then very far down at the bottom, the quad rights. Okay, so we've got our quad lefts and quad rights. Those are the ones who are deeply, deeply leaning either towards the past, quad left, or the future, quad right. Future as in our evolutionary journey. This is an evolutionary map that you're looking at. Okay, so your strategy and authority, quad left, quad right, really important for you. Now, over here in the middle, anybody in this middle area, this yellow square, the, yellow, the blue square, the green square, and the orange square that are right there in the center. Anybody there in the middle? You can just type in, I'm in the middle, and we can all say a prayer for you because those are the hardest. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> those are the hardest, though. So we can, you know, give you a little slack. We'll just give you a little extra uh, hugs and, um, you know, pats on the back and comfort and consoling because we know it's difficult. Anytime you see this middle area, if somebody's in there in the middle, it's just so much more <laughs> variable is a good word. Is there's so much change there. Notice how there's a lot more friction going on. We've got all left and then right, or they're opposites. My teacher, Andrea Reiko Wolf, calls these the twisties, where they're just like completely twisted. You see that? Where they're just like, okay, what's going on here? I don't know. It's a little bit more confusing, I would say. The middle area? Yeah, yeah. The middle area is a little bit more confusing, like this person right here with this orange, my, my sister over here, our brothers where we have a process that is deeply leaning towards the right as far as their brain and mind, but their body, what the path that they're walking is deeply focused left. So you can see there's a lot of different things that we get to learn with this magic variable grid, and it's so much fun. So I'm really glad you're here uh, playing with me. Now, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit because I've been saying words that, especially if English is not your first language, and I know I have a lot of people overseas. Let's talk about what cognition is, because this is what we're talking about with those arrows. Cognition refers to the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience, and the senses. So another thing we can say about cognition is that it's the mental process of knowing, including aspects such as awareness, perception, reasoning, judgment. Also that which comes to be known as through perception, reasoning, intuition, knowledge. Knowledge or certain knowledge as from a personal view or experience, perception, cognizance. Now, the thing that I want to focus all of us on right now is the word the senses can see that I just pulled, you know, from Wikipedia and from a DuckDuckGo search, looking for some words to use in here and just screenshot it for you. But here in human design, the most important place that we begin is with your body's sensory capacity, okay? Sensory capacity. So senses are the first thing that we really want to take uh, note of the very first thing. Now, what variable points to these 16 different combinations is what Raw calls a potential for the natural order of things. Now, the natural order of things is that, for example, our quad left people, very strategic and active and observed and focused, they're very busy with their brain and their mind, they are the ones we're designed to dig into things and really process things consciously as they're taking in. So as I'm talking, one of the things you might notice is that you're looking over at your charts, you're looking at charts of other people, you're trying to figure it all out, you're wanting to ask me questions, you've got all these questions and you really want to, you know, work with the information, take advantage of that information. Okay, that's the natural order of things for those. Now down here in the far right, that's not the same thing. It's completely opposite. You're passive, receptive, being an observer, and you're peripheral, so taking it all in. Not discerning, not trying to figure things out, but you're this incredible well and a storehouse of information that is not processed as you're taking it in. It's deeply leaning towards the future. 
So this natural order of things, Ross says it's long lost, and it's not one that we can recoup as a species. However, since you and I are lucky enough to have discovered human design, we can take advantage of our own individual sovereign place in this natural order, through this learning, experimenting, and through our experience together, growing as human beings and understanding that all of us are unique and different and perfectly beautiful exactly as we are. It's just that some of us got a little bit more lost along the way. So right now, I'm going to grab my pen. I'm going to show you the ones who have gotten lost, more likely to have gotten lost along the way, and more likely that it's very important that you look into this sooner rather than later. What I'm doing is I'm circling the right brain system, brain-body system. So if you remember where you were on this map and you see that I have circled your brain, this is your brain, and it might need some help, okay? Because this is a brain that tends to get easily homogenized from birth. I'm talking right when you were born. In the first seven years, we don't usually don't remember much of our first seven years, do we? And we're more likely to have fat brain, as Ra calls it, fat brain. As in, we've been storing things that were not conducive for us being our highest, most mm, exalted, innate, mm, wonderful potential. We've gotten lost a little bit along the way. So there might be some remedial work to do when it comes to your brain. Now, remember, I'm over here. This is my experience. I was so messed up when I came to human design. You wouldn't even recognize me. You wouldn't believe the kinds of changes that I've gone through in the last 10 years, last decade of experimenting with human design. So if you're trying to learn human design or anything that's really um, challenging for you to work with cognitively, as in comprehend, even if it's like your, your strategy and authority, you're like, I'm not figuring this out. I really, I've been studying. I still don't know what this is all about. Please, somebody help me. This is where we need to start, okay? With your brain body system. Really, really important. Okay, so natural order of things is when we look at variable, we'll find a place of comfort I remember watching my variable um, mapping video, and the first time, especially when it came to this right here, this left brain, just kind of blubbering. Of course, I'm an <laughs> emotional projector, but really, it felt so relieving and so um, elevating to get rid of all of the homogenized blah, 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 the stories that people told me about how I should be the stories that my mind believed because I took on those, you know, um, conditionings, thinking that I was supposed to be like this person or like that person. So I first started experimenting with my dietary regimen in February of 2013. Primary health system is another word for that, a personal health system. So since that time, my life has radically altered. I, I think differently. How I see is different, where I live, how I learn, how I eat, how I process and digest life. So it's also changed my physical form, my voice, the way that my mind can structure my conversations. I can tell you this, what I'm doing right now, talking to you like this, would have been impossible before human design. And I owe so much of my practice, my success in teaching human design to this higher functioning cognition that I have. I'm feeling cognition. That's a really sensitive cognition. So before human design, I couldn't hold conversations together. My attention span was so short, I couldn't focus. And I was really emotionally volatile. I would shut down if I got any kind of dysregulated and I couldn't hear, I would completely disassociate and shut down like a little small child. Now, again, totally different person. So if you're looking forward to some kind of radical transformation, some people are more radical than others, this is the place to be. 
because variable points you to the way that you're optimally designed to operate and how you take in information and experience your sensory capacity feeling for me into the world some of us is smelling tasting touching there's all kinds of ways that we're designed to cognate so now we know that you have an active or a passive brain active brains i want to tell you it's really important that you don't skip meals not an, healthy for you to fast because your brain uses more fuel if you've got a right brain, a passive brain, it's not healthy for you to try and eat when you're not hungry. So sitting down and eating three meals a day with the family because you're supposed to, that's homogenizing. Yeah, so remember how I said all the passive brains tend to get homogenized? That's homogenizing. If you overeat, if you stuff your body with too much food, it dumbs you down. Now it's going to dumb you down from your cognitive potential for me feeling. For those of you who are left brains, it's going to dumb you down as in you won't have enough fuel if you try to follow the latest diet fad of, um, what is that, intermittent fasting, forcing yourself to do that, not as a natural occurrence from, let's say, when you're sick and you're just not hungry. Okay, so it's important to make sure that we treat our bodies with kindness, not with the latest fad diet. This is not about what we eat here, but it's the circumstances, the conditions under which how we take in not only food, but people too. Life. Life. I'm a cold thirst person. So if I'm trying to learn anything and I'm overheated or heaven forbid, teach anything, and I'm overheated, not going to work so great. So to know these simple keys about yourself, how your brain is designed to function, or if we talk about our process of awareness in the environment, not just the mind's process, but from the brain, how are we designed to interface with the environment that we're, we're in? Are we designed to be observed or the observer? Those are very different things, just like being focused versus being peripheral, very different things. So you can see all of these different combinations, just simple little clues. These are things that are going to help make a difference in how you learn about yourself as yourself and how you interact with the world, how you take in and process information. So it is a tool for transformation. I really love that it can help us also be more relaxed rather than stressed out like this woman you can see here, maybe even depressed. So variable is to our awareness what type is to form. It's a tool for transformation. This knowledge can truly make a difference not only in your human design experiment, but just your life experience as well. As we are nine-centered beings, you are a uniquely individual consciousness, just as valuable and precious as the person sitting next to you or across the world from you. And each of you has a potential to be very specifically tuned, differentiated, according to your unique human design. Each of us as humans are designed to have a really peculiar and particular way. It seems peculiar because it is weird. Sometimes it's really weird as far as how our innate intelligence expresses itself. I like to think of it as the way each of us can experience how our own superpower shines when we are operating correctly. So in human design, your unique cognitive intelligence, it offers you a signpost and it can be a miracle, not only for your processing of life, but even for the diagnosis and treatment of your form. Now, recently I have shifted my business to a private ministerial association. And the reason for that, as an ordained minister, I can offer you suggestions based on your human design and leave it up to your own authority to work with. So taking my business out of the public realm and making this experience private 
means that I can talk to you about your body graph and what it's showing as far as indicators of misalignment. We can say that in another way, as in disease. Indicators of issues with your physical um, experience of how you're operating. So all kinds of biological correlations we can see in the body graph. Because, yeah, it is the primary health system. And also what we can see are requirements for certain kinds of substances, fuels that we need from this body graph. So you know how there's like fad diets out there? What if there was a, a way of taking in food and the kinds of fuels that you knew you thrived on? This is what the human design system can show you. So that's a really cool thing that I am happy to offer. Because what happens if you're not operating in alignment? The dysfunction is catastrophic, not only to your well-being. It reduces your longevity. It screws up your chemistry. You're definitely not going to be feeling good or happy if your chemistry is messed up or if you're sick all the time. Efficiency is going to be improved as well as your effectiveness, not just with you know your relational dynamics, but also your work, just in general. Your perspective changes. Your motivation is tuned or honed. And this also can improve, not promising anything, but it can improve your bottom line. For me personally, I have found that to be very true with a lot of different other factors, like just knowing that I'm a right brain, yeah, and that I have a strategic mind, how different they are from each other. You know, it's providing the possibility of beginning to surrender more deeply to my mechanics. So what if you knew these mechanics for yourself, your own individual design, when this knowledge is coupled with correct decisions, now there's this comprehensive set of tools that we can use, strategies that I'm going to give you for in what is in most cases are decades and decades and decades of conditioning and homogenization. If you're in your 20s, Thank heavens you found this because you're really lucky. If you're in your 50s or your 60s or even your 70s, it's not too late. It's never too late to get back on track and at least have some tools for experimentation. Now, because we are conditioned to believe we have to be what we are not, it's not uncommon to discover that you're attempting to strategically act in an area where you're naturally designed to function receptively or passively. So when you attempt to be strategic, when you're not designed to be and you're, you're designed to be receptive, what happens is you put a tremendous strain on yourself, in this case, your mind, and that can cause so many dysfunctional, catastrophic, devastating, and it truly is devastating. I'll use that word. I'm not just exaggerating. It's devastating from the experience of achieving our fullest and highest potential. So your true potential can be seen right there in that body graph. We can read that body graph in so many different ways. If you're curious to learn about what the variable is actually speaking to, it's talking about tone. Okay, tone is a key for the tool of transformation that's going to make a difference in your process so that your mind can function optimally, so that your cognition, whatever it happens to be for you, both on the body side and on the mind side, works in its highest capacity, its highest functioning. So there is a catalyst that gets all of this started. That's strategy and authority. That's the first thing. But if you're wanting to walk down the path of differentiation with me, this is where variable truly helps you find your alignment. So we're going to comprehend how this experiment can transform you beyond a level to which usually that is anything that you can even dream of or think of. Like I said, it's like a superpower. So it's also going to protect you and distance you from the homogenized perception that most of the world is experiencing right now. Wouldn't it be nice to have a little like protective blankie that you can wrap around yourself so that you don't get caught up in all the fear mongering that's happening right now? My God, it's insane. Now, alignment of purpose is the whole 
point and passion and what I'm wanting to get across to you today is that when you're operating in alignment, now we can find the truest innate potential of how we were born to be. And if you're not anywhere close to it, or if you've only had little tastes and whiffs, keep experimenting. Don't give up. Dedicate yourself to your own process. This is only about you. You are the only one that can shift and change and morph in these times that we're in, these uncertain times that we're in. And the background frequency is actually helping us do that right now. So this tool, Variable, is going to help guide you, not only your mind to your natural intelligence and functioning, but also protect you from attempting to align with your shadow self, which most people are living in, the shadow state. If you're living in frustration, anger, bitterness, disappointment, more often than not, that's a sign that you're in shadow state. If you're living in success, the sweet success that you were born for, the surprise that is alignment, your peace and your satisfaction, that's a totally different frequency, isn't it? Totally different story. So in realigning to the core aspect of your spirit, what makes you you, this facilitates a profound transformation at a cellular level. Now that phrase right there, profound transformation at a cellular level, we use that in the living your design awakening experience because it is, that's what kicks it off. It gets you to follow your decision-making strategy. Now when we move to this, variable makes it possible to have a deeper harmony with your innate body wisdom, your true design which brings you not only greater satisfaction and success and surprise and peace, but also every one of us can experience more ease in our life. I'm not going to say it's always easy, just that it's more easeful. Your body is more relaxed when you're treating it correctly. Without substances, I might add. I've been clean for a really long time thankfully, used to self-medicate a lot to get through this crazy world. Ultimately, your variable connects you to your potential. And on this journey of transformation, I do need to let you know, if you're thinking about taking classes with me, please do stay off any of the drugs that alter your perception and your reality, because it's not something that I can work with. Okay, so if you have any of those um, mind-altering drugs that you're on on a regular basis, I can't have you in my small group classes. Happy to refer you to someone else. IHDSschool.com forward slash professionals. Look for a differentiation degree practitioner who can work with you one-on-one. -on -one. I don't do that. Because my joy is to work with aligning my little groups, because I'm a small group projector, and... Also going on a little a journey and adventure of learning and discovery with each of you. That's what I like to do. Okay. So we learned what it is. We learned why to live it, why to learn it. Now we're going to go a little bit deeper so that you can clean off the window of your viewpoint. And it's also going to help you shatter the shadow self's hold on your life. So let's talk about the five keys to awareness. The first thing is that it reduces the level of anxiety that you experience. Anybody else experiencing anxiety? Turn off the TV. Stop checking the news feeds. It's all about correctness of awareness to come back home to the only reality you are certainly experiencing, and that is your body. Your body is the life. So the most important key, one of the first keys is using your body, the temple that it is, the house of the spirit, to make decisions. So this decision-making strategy, your authoritative process, is the paramount mm, thing that I want to make sure that you're very, very clear on. Now, we're moving into the four transformations that variable is taking us through. Because what Ross says about this is that variable addresses what strategy and authority can't. It can't. And that is the correctness in the realms of your mind and your awareness. Strategy and authority doesn't address that. Have you noticed? 
I'm experimenting with human design and um, yeah, making decisions better, but my mind is still really stressing me out. Is that correct? You know, is your mind still really bothering you, stressing you, anxiety provoking? This is where this step, the four transformations, the radical transformations, this is where we can go to start to mitigate some of these shadows from the mind to clean off the distortion. So our differentiation is now we're fulfilling, fulfilling it in two ways. This is the body or the mind. Okay, the body and its relationship to the environment or the mind and its relationship to how it's seeing. So those four arrows of leftness and rightness correspond to the four components that comprise your variable. Yeah, the four transformations. This is about digestion and awareness. Okay, so your proper dietary regimen for optimal functioning of your brain's system. That's the first and most important thing. And then we also have your perspective, which is the unique view that you're designed to see in the environment. Now, our awareness is predicated upon being, oops, in the right environment. Which way did I accidentally go? This way. Sometimes my finger just brushes that apple mouse and it's completely, whoops, completely gone. Um, now I'm not on the right slide. One more. There we go. No, nope, there. <laughs> I'm having a third line moment. Oh, well, the where I was was right here. And your perspective, what I was talking about is that your perspective is how you find your correct awareness because everything about our awareness hinges upon the right perspective. Digestion of life, processing of life, is the first step. But about being aware in the right environment, that all, all of this has to work together and it will work together perfectly just the way it was designed to just for you if you are operating in alignment. Your environment, the correct place, the frequency of the place that you're at, offers the nurturance and protection of your body, nourished from, I like to say, from the outside in. So these four keys are the things that we're really going to process as we go into alignment. So this calculation of variable is, offers the first step. We're going to begin with the top left arrow. So if you're looking at your body graph, it's going to be the one that's right next to the sun and earth. This is my advanced Maya Mechanics. You can get it on jovianarchive.com. There's also Maya Mechanics online or MMI online. I'm not sure what the URL is. If somebody knows, please type it into the chat. I forget. I'm not using it yet. I'm a little bit stuck in the uh, other older software. Okay, so you have a brain body system that is either left or right left or right. And because this is a key component, an aspect of what is inherent in our very nature, we've got to deal with this body first, because if we don't deal with the body first, nothing that we do is really going to stick. Remember how I said, if you have a passive brain body system and you're having trouble with life, we got to go here first. If you're left, oh, lucky you, less likely to be uh, fat brain homogenized. But this is about finding your most appropriate, aligned, healthy way of taking in nourishment from life. Not just um, food that passes the mouth, but things that you smell, things that you taste, things that you touch, things that you feel, things that you work with that are in your environment, things that come across your plate that your brain processes, the things that you see, you know? So it's about nourishing yourself from the inside out, from what you put inside your body, whether that be information, food, people. People are food. Information is food. Have you noticed? It nourishes us. This is why human design is predicated on strategy and authority, because we do need to use strategy and authority, decision-making strategy, as far as deciding how we're designed to take in, who we're designed to take in. It's a discerning process. And that's what this variable is, is talking to. So when we look deeper at the tonal cognition, if you continue on in the journey with 
with us. The point is to align your form, your body, to treat your body the right way it's designed to be treated. So that was the body. Now let's look at the mind. This is my conscious personality, Sun Earth. You can see that the arrow is pointing left. This is your mind, also known as your motivation system. It's going to be right or left. So there's a really great video on YouTube, all of Ra's videos on YouTube under Jovian Archive um, channel about leftness and rightness in education. If you have kids, please go watch that video because this personality awareness really explains so much about how we learn, how we're designed to function consciously. So this represents our correct outer authority in wholeness and totality here. So to be able to correctly express our unique outer authority, what Ra calls the nine-centered enlightenment, that's the beauty and the wonderment of coming to the end of the, this is the fourth transformation right here, the end of the process and journey. For me personally, it's where, why I started this uh, process with Human Design America back when I was looking around for the right people to learn from because I wrote another big school that I thought, you know, she was really popular, had a lot of books and a lot of videos and I thought, well, why don't I just go and learn with her? She's like half the price of these people over here. And she never wrote me back because I wanted to know this stuff. And she didn't teach it, didn't believe in it, and also wasn't qualified to teach uh, it at all, the, the things that I wanted to learn. So this is why I went through the official IHGS certified teachers. Also just you know more and more study and finding the right teacher for me. It's important that you can hear the teacher that you're paying attention to. So if you're still here, Obviously, you can hear me. And I'm seeing that Sarah is saying, I'm totally get hangry and brain fog when I don't eat enough. Yeah, left brain or right brain. So left, there you go. There's the lefties. Hangry and brain fog when you don't eat, when you let yourself starve. So I'll give you a little tip trick for all you lefties, left brains. If you are not able to put a little snack in your mouth, Carry, do carry around some snacks just in case, you know, an emergency, you're driving or something. Um, hot liquids might be really helpful because what it does is it stimulates your brain to get you back on track. Okay, so temporary stopgap for you, hot liquids at a break, which we're about to get to a break point really soon here. So remember, with your brain body system at the top left, it's either going to be active or passive, active or passive. So your brain is really busy or it's not. <laughs> now on the right hand side, awareness, we have strategic or receptive. Your mind is either going to be strategic as in linking things, working with things, processing things, taking down notes, you know, that kind of thing, or you're receptive. Remember how I gave you a little key for people over here? I'm going to give you a key over here now. So you left strategic mind people note taking might be really supportive of your process asking questions might be really supportive of your process engaging like sarah just said and Anne saying i always carry snacks with me excellent yeah yeah i always bring liquid with me cold liquid and snacks everywhere i go <laughs> to make sure that i am um, fueled correctly because i tend to forget to eat yeah, I'm the passive brain over here. I forget to eat. And then what those of you with the active brain need regular meals, not to skip meals. Otherwise, high brain fog. Okay, so now with the mind process, the receptive, let me just clear that up for a, get a bit here. Those of you who are right here, <laughs> it's really important to recognize that you don't have to know exactly what you just learned. You don't have to necessarily explain what you just learned. Let's say at the end of this session that I'm doing with you, somebody says, hey, what were you doing for the last hour? And you go, I really don't remember. I don't, I don't really have a clue. I don't have any hmm, opinion about it yet. Maybe you don't have the gate of opinions or the channel of awareness or sorry, 
uh, organization. So it's important that you just give yourself a break when you've got these right arrows because you're designed to be a well, a well for others to dip into, for these strategics especially. The strategic can go in and, you know, reach into your well, pull things out of you. So we're designed to work together. This is not about one being good, bad, right, wrong. This is about you living to your optimum capacity, your optimum brain functioning so that you can work at a high level. So the psychological level will learn so much more if you continue on in the journey. Because what happens here is society tends to reward and work towards getting everybody on the strategic page. So what tends to happen, they value strategic functioning, they give us tests and such, and what happens is the receptive mind ends up feeling like there's something wrong with them, like you're less than capable, you're unable to excel, you can't fit in, you feel like you're dumb, you don't remember things. It's because you're not designed to recall like the strategic is. You're interactive, you're inter dependent, interdependent with others. You're not dumb. You're just very receptive. Now, knowing how you're designed to take in information also allows you to take advantage of this optimal functioning so that you can relax and trust your own capacity to move through life correctly. If you're having a question, I saw a hand raised, that might have been an accident, but do pop your chart into the chat. It's your link to my body graph that I'll accept today. I cannot run charts today. But if you want to put a question and your chart into the chat, especially those of you, the two of you who just signed up, or I know Sarah, you're interested, and um, there's two Sarahs actually. <laughs> You're both Sarah that want to take this next one. Um, I will start a new group with four people confirmed. There's six people max per group because this is really detailed levels of um, chart clinic analysis that I'm going to and it's over 10 weeks and I want to make sure that we have lots of time to work with your charts real specifically. Okay, so if you have a question, you can pop that into the chat. Now, let's look real briefly at environment and perspective. These um, environmental transformations. It's number two on the left and three on the right. Let me get my pen. Okay, so number two, and then we go over to number, th no, <laughs> number three. I haven't eaten yet today. I should probably go pretty soon. But when we're looking at your bottom left-hand arrow, observed versus observer. So are you designed to be observed in your environment, as in are you doing things? Are you the passive, kickback, relaxed observer person? Passive, kickback, relaxed observer. That's a different story, hey? So if you've ever been called uh, lazy and you've got this over here, you can just let go of that accusation because you're designed to be the couch potato variable, Rob would call it, by nature. Relaxed, kickback, no pressure, no stress. A high stress environment for you, mm, not healthy. People trying to get you to do things, eh, no, more, more relaxed, just watching. Just letting it all flow past you. You know, you're observing, you're observing. I'm the observed. I'm sitting here in my chair and my chair is swiveling. I cannot not move when I'm talking, so I'm talking with my hands. My, my chair is swiveling, I'm doing things, you know. Now we're gonna move to the personality nodes of the moon. And this is how we're designed to see, okay? This is where we be, how we're operating where we be. I use the term be here because it rhymes with see, so that you can remember where we are being and what we are seeing. This is the path that we're walking, you know? Our direction in life. So if you're focused, you're somebody like me who is honing in on something really specific. I'm looking at two screens right now. If there's stuff going on on the other screen, I don't see it because I'm focused. I'm really focused on just seeing, you know, this thing or that thing. It's a discerning kind of personal for me, personal perspective. Now, peripheral people, they're taking in a really wide view. It's not focused. It's not honed. Seeing all kinds of things. So it's a very different way of seeing these windows of our viewpoint. 
So our optimal longevity comes from being in the right environment. And our optimal mental cognition comes from seeing in the correct way. When you study the variables deeper, you go through the radical transformations, you're going to learn the fullest experience of your unique cognitive potential. This is highly prized, isn't it? To operate in alignment, to use your brain, body, and mind capacity to the fullest. It's one of the things I really love about human design that has improved life for me. So we know it's about making correct decisions. If it is correct for you to study deeper, I invite you to buy your own variable workshop. Now, Ra did these in 2009. He did them to a group of that variable. And I can tell you, uh, I did work for Jovian RK for a really long time. I still write for them. But, and I don't get any kickbacks or um, money from you buying your own variable workshop. It's not that expensive. It's like 25 bucks. So if you want to learn more about yourself, those are really great resources on jovianarchive.com. If you are a human design aspiring professional, a student in analyst training, going through the differentiation degree program is the first step. After that, you take holistic analysis to become a holistic analyst. And then after that, you go through the variable teacher training. So it's many, many years of study, and it is definitely a profound transformation in the way that you understand this beautiful human design system. So it's really, I highly recommend it. It's so incredible. Now, those were the resources. If you'd like to continue to be transformed, we're going to go to this real quick, and then I'm going to give everybody a break, especially you left brains. Um, take a break. And when we come back, we can answer questions. I just need to go get like a snack or something to refuel myself before we continue on in the journey. So put your charts into the Q&A box because in the Q&A box, I will be able to look at your chart and you can ask any question that you'd like. Okay. Now, if you're ready to transform to get professional guidance and also implementation, implementation advice, that's what I do. I'm really good at implementing the human design system. Uh, that's my joy and my process. Doing these clinics are so much fun. If you're ready for that, do just write me, office at humandesignlifecoaching.com. Myself or one of my assistants will get back to you. I need to know who was your human design analyst and your living your design teacher. That's the prerequisite for this experience. If you want to take this and you're in the BG5 realm, I need to know who was your BG5 foundations instructor and also your BG5 consultant, just to verify that you are qualified as far as the process of individuation. There are some prerequisites. Those are the most important things. The next, like I mentioned, is no psychedelic drugs in class. Okay, if you're on uppers or downers, taking any kind of accelerant or decelerant, I have a really hard time with that in my class because I'm a feeling cognition and it um, disrupts the energetics if you're altered in any way. Also, too, sleeping alone, experimenting with that as much as possible for at le least six months if it's possible, experimenting with your human design experiment, following your decision-making strategy, strategy and authority for at least six months, ideally a year. You don't want to start this too quickly. The only um, thing I'll say with that one is if you're a right brain body system, remember how I told you the right brain is more likely to have fat brain? Okay, I'll make an exception for you. As long as you um, have taken the coursework, LYD or BG5 foundations and gotten a full analysis and also um, I will accept a full BG5 um, 16 success code presentation that is usually people do it within two or three sessions so that's quite a lot. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that we're working with people who are really dedicated to themselves and the knowledge 
that you're at a certain level of education so that I don't have to explain basic concepts. And the last thing that I really need to get across is I cannot advise you on anybody's chart that I cannot see. If I'm not talking to that person and they don't have their chart right in front of me, I will not give you advice on your kids, your family, your friends, your cousins, what have you. I can't. I need to see the chart. I need to have a working relationship in order to give you good advice, precise advice, because energetically I can tap into you, your voice, and ask you questions. Can't do that with the other people. Besides the fact it's not fair to the people who are in the class with me. Okay, so that's my, my little things that I want to uh, let you know. Okay, so that is, oh, the little book there. It's an, a free ebook on Jovian. And I was one of the co-authors of that book and also some of the work on the blogs and things like that.